Chelsea was born uh, in October of 96, and um, you know, the first six, seven months were just perfect. She was our first child. And then I would say the first inkling that something wasn't right was around, around her one year birthday. Um, she still wasn't crawling, she wasn't pulling up to standing. Um, she couldn't get herself into a seated position on her own, although if you sat her down, she could stay there. Our pediatrician uh, gave us a referral for physical therapy. We started physical therapy. By 14 months, she could get herself into a sitting position and she did start to crawl. She was progressing physically, but I had, by that point, I was really quite um, panic-stricken because she had, she was starting to cross her eyes. She wasn't reaching for toys anymore. She couldn't feed herself Cheerios anymore. I could see that she was losing hand skills. Hey, Charles. Rett syndrome is a childhood neurological disease. It primarily affects uh, girls. It's a, you know, a fairly tragic disease. The symptoms are quite debilitating. And uh, a, a classic child with Rett syndrome is um, in a wheelchair, um, unable to speak, um, fed through a feeding tube, um, seizures, anxiety, orthopedic issues, scoliosis, contractures, um, and, and no hand function. So they are really trapped. Um, they can understand you know, what is going on. Um, cognitively, they're quite intact. And can you tell me yes or no? I started um, my first organization, the Rett Syndrome Research Foundation, uh, in late 99, just as the gene for Rett syndrome or mutations in the gene had been discovered. So the timing turned out to be really good because the field really exploded at that point um, with interest. So fast forward 15 years, I have since started um, another organization, the Rett Syndrome Research Trust. We're a research focused organization. We raise funds um, and, and fund science um, projects, organize scientific meetings, um, facilitate collaborations and consortiums, um, facilitate the sharing of reagents and animal models, recruiting new scientists into the field, um, sharing information that RET researchers need. I first um, learned about uh, Dr. Green's work probably five years ago. He was doing a, a project looking for genes that could unsilence the silenced X chromosome. We're interested in gene regulation and one of the projects we've worked on is the mechanism of X chromosome inactivation uh, and try to identify factors by which an entire chromosome is shut off. By uh, addition of a small molecule drug, what we've been able to do is to block the X chromosome inactivation mechanism leading to the expression of the wild type MECP2 gene uh, in these mutant cells. Uh, and what we hope is that by uh, restoring expression of uh, at least some wild type MECP2 gene in all cells in the brains, we can uh, have a uh, positive effect on Rett syndrome. It's really great that there's organizations like this to fund disease-related research. To get NIH funding, you pretty much have to be doing mainstream research. They don't fund bold and innovative projects uh, often. By contrast, an organization like this uh, is willing to t take on high-risk projects that have controversial uh, hypotheses and rationales uh, because these are the ones that really may uh, have a great impact on disease. So you said more to say. My ultimate goal is a cure for Rett syndrome. Um, we'll take treatments that will improve some symptoms, but we also hope to make a really dramatic impact on quality of life.